Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be doing a first impression, demo, and first day review of, of the new Game Over eyeshadow palette called Artemis. Now, this is based from Ready Player One, which is a movie that actually comes out today, the day that I'm filming it, March 29th. I read the book last year, and you know, I absolutely fell in love with the universe and with some of the characters, not some of the other characters, um, but overall, I fell into the same like way that I felt about it that I feel about a couple of other like series, like anime series and books, where I love the universe and I love a lot of like the ideas that they bring up, but then the story itself kind of falls just a little bit flat. But either way, I was really excited for the movie when I heard that it was announced, especially since Steven Spielberg was directing it. But, you know, I saw the trailer. I saw the extended trailer, and... I mean, I can't pass too much judgment until I've actually seen the movie, of course. But based on what I've seen from the trailer, I'm a little worried. <laughs> I'm a little worried. Also, it looks a lot more like anime than I thought it would. I'll, like, I don't know if I can throw up screenshots without getting, like, copyrighted. But I'll see if I can throw up screenshots of what I'm talking about, like... Especially Artemis. Like, Artemis is nothing like she was described in the book, guys. Like, But anyway, that brings us to this. It's an eyeshadow palette. I bought it from Hot Topic. So let's go ahead and jump into this video where I try out some eyeshadows and rant about a book that I really liked. If you like this video and you can't wait to see Ready Player One, don't forget to give this a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see the rest of my videos as they come out. So let's go ahead and jump into this eye look while I rant about books. So I've done my whole face. I have um, got my brows done. I did my brows a little darker and more intense than I normally do because I feel like they matched the wig. I really love this wig. I went ahead and I fixed the part. I plucked a little bit from it and I love it. So I feel like the brows match the wig really well. So anyway, enough about that. I purchased the Artemis eyeshadow palette from HotTopic.com. So I placed my order for this and then one other item back on March 12th. I got this 20% off, so I paid $12.97 for this palette right here. I also bought one other thing that was Ready Player One related. Um, they had a set of bath bombs. I love bath bombs, man. I can't get enough of them, especially because we just redid our bathroom, so we have a whole new bathtub. Like, I'm gonna break into Like, it took so much self-restraint to not use these before this video. Since we got the new bathtub, I'm so excited. Like, literally after I'm done with this, I'm gonna, like, strip and drop right into the bathtub. But anyway, these are bath bombs shaped into the three keys from the book slash movie. I thought that was really cute, and I had to pick them up as well. So I got that and the eyeshadow palette. So totally... So the total for the two of them, plus shipping, was $32.45. The two products were $25.54, and then shipping was $4.99. I wasn't really happy with the shipping, considering- oh god, I got hair in my eye. I wasn't really happy with the shipping, because they charged me $4.99, and it took a full, like, week to get to me. So I placed the order back on March 12th. It shipped on March 13th, which I was surprised that it shipped, like, the next day, and I was like, oh cool, I'll get it soon. Not really. It shipped March 13th, and I didn't actually get the package until March 20th. So it took a full week to ship, and that was $4.99. Like, I've been on other websites where $4.99 is, like, two-day shipping. Like, I mean, it might just be Hot Topic and the way that they do things, but shipping took a lot longer than normal, and I do a lot of online shopping. Like, like give me a good website. Give me... You know all the time alone to shop and I'm all over it like I try to avoid shopping with other people or shopping out and about unless like I really need something so anyway aside from the shipping it came in a like normal like brown box everything was packaged nicely none of the shadows broke which I was very happy about I was a little worried that some of the shadows were going to break uh, you get nine shadows in here five are matte they're in kind of like this Tetris shape right here in the middle the mattes and then the rest are shimmers. Oh my god, I just dug my finger into the black shade. Oh, I just made a mess. Oh no. Oh shit. Okay, so excuse the fact that I just dug like a gigantic dip into the black shade right there. I was trying to get the brush out, so I'm just gonna tip it over. It comes with a brush, it's not double-sided, and actually, let me see if I can zoom in on this, but like, it's wrapped in like a tape that's supposed to match like the design of the palette, but 
works. I don't know if you can tell, but like right there, like the tape is coming off. Like it just looks really cheapy. Um, and the brush itself, it's just like a flat shader brush. It's nothing spectacular. So as normal, like with these kind of palettes, I'm not gonna use the brush. Um, but other than that, the palette itself is actually like really nicely designed. You have all your shades right here. You have a gigantic mirror on this side and you can actually, oh, excuse me here. You can actually fold it all the way back. So you can use your shadows on this side and if you wanna use the mirror, you got it on this side, which I really appreciate. They added in a couple of little designs like from the universe of the movie slash the book. You've got a little thing down here that says Gunter Life, which is really cute. You've got an anti-sixers badge up in the corner. The top says second place never looked so good. And then you got a Planet Doom sticker right over here in the corner. So I think like they paid a good amount of attention to detail with this palette, which I think is very, very cute. It's very, very 80s. You've got like the like these stripes, you've got like blue to pink, very neon, and I really appreciate the color selection here. You've got a yellow, a green, a red, a shimmery pink, a blue, a shimmery white, a black, matte black, uh, a light kind of baby blue, and then a purple shimmer. So I think the colors are picked very well. I love how colorful it is. I want to see how great the quality is. So before we jump into the demo, let's go ahead and jump into swatches of all of these shades on my arm real quick. Okay, so with all of the shipping, buying, and swatching information out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the demo. So I have some clips for my hair, or not, my hair that is not my hair, because this is a wig. I'm just gonna clip it to the sides because it tends to get a little crazy. Oh, I look, I look adorable. Let's, oof. Okay, I'll go ahead and zoom you guys in a little bit just to take a look at the eye look. So I looked at this palette and I really felt drawn to this middle row. We've got a baby blue, we've got like a teal, and we've got like a light green. I really want to use those shades. And then I really want to try out, don't know if I want to use the yellow shimmer or the silver shimmer. So I'm first going to jump in with the shade Synergy, which is this grain, grain. I'm first going to jump in with Synergy, which is this light lime green, and I'm going to use that as my transition shade. Ooh, the shadow is quite powdery. You get a lot of kick up when you go in. And that did next to nothing. Okay, let me try dipping it again. Maybe I won't tap off the excess. Let's just tap it in and see what happens. Okay. Okay, there you are. Okay, so by doing what I normally do, like tapping in and then tapping off the excess and going in, it rarely, it didn't even show up, like at all. So what you have to do is tap in, get a lot of product on your brush, tap it in, like where you want it to go, and then blend it out otherwise you're not going to see any like pigment at all. I mean I am a little worried about fallout because it is so powdery but right now I'm not seeing any fallout from the shade. 
Okay, so I am noticing like right up here where I've already placed the color and blended it out that when I go in and like try to build it up a little bit more, it's like totally blending away. So I'm gonna try to add a little bit more and not blend too much, just kind of like pat it in. Okay, so pigmentation isn't great, but I was able to build it up for my transition. And let me show you the palette. You can see that there's like green everywhere. So I'm gonna take a smaller, still fluffy brush. This is a Morphe M573. And I'm gonna go in with the next shade up, which is New Wave, this kind of like teal shade. I'm gonna dip in. Okay, so surprisingly, that one didn't give me as much kick up. Let me try it with the big fluffy brush. Yeah, even with the big fluffy brush, that one didn't have as much like kick up. So we're already seeing a little bit of inconsistency in like the formula here in the palette. So I'm gonna coat my Morphe brush. Let's try it. We're gonna tap off the excess and then go in a little bit lower than where I placed Synergy. Okay, so that one's blending out a little bit better. I'm still not seeing any fallout, which is really surprising. And it is blending out nicely, a lot better than Synergy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other eye. Okay, so I'm actually like not mad at how this is turning out so far. It looks nice. It blended out okay. I jumped into my Vera Mona color switch and I took off all of that color. Next, I'm gonna jump in with a joystick. I'm gonna use my same Morphe M573 and I'm gonna bring it a little bit lower than when I brought New Wave. Again, the shadow is pressed a little bit harder than that green shade that we first jumped into. I don't know if the green shade is just like the outlier where that one was just like really, really loose. But let's see. So the pigment on that one was a lot lighter than the other two shades, but you know, I'm liking like the light shift that it's giving the other two shades right now. Like overall, like the look, I'm actually kind of really like liking. <laughs> Cause it's going from green to blue to baby blue. And I think overall it's looking nice. Okay. So with all of that blended out, I really want to try one of these shimmers. And I think it's going to be the shade three dimensional, which is the silvery silver. I will of course be using a glitter glue like I always do because, oh my God, that rhymed. Since I have such hooded lids, if I don't use a glitter glue with anything, the shade just comes right off anyway. But I just want to let you guys know I'm using the NYX glitter glue for this. Okay, so the shimmer isn't like the most blinding shimmer in the world, but I do like the way it applies. It blends in well with the other shades, and I like the undertone of it. All right, so I did get a little bit of fallout from the silver shimmer a little bit down here and over here. So I'm gonna swipe that away. And I'm actually really happy with how the looks turned out so far. So I think I'm gonna stop it right there for my lid. I'm gonna jump in with liner, some mascara, and then we'll come back for the lower lash line. Okay guys, so we're back. I have my liner and mascara on and I'm really liking the look so far. For the lower lash line, I really want to go in with another pop of color. So I'm going to do my best to try High Fidelity, which is like this shimmery yellow color. Since it is a shimmer, I'm going to go ahead and use the NYX Glitter Glue on the inner part of my lower lash line just to see how it sticks to that. And then on the outer portion, I'll just leave it glitter glue free so we can see how it applies and how it wears. Okay, so while I put this on, I'm going to rant a little bit about the movie and the book. Now, I really liked the premise of the book. I liked that the main character was like this, like average nerdy like person and that he was described as being like overweight and like an outcast and didn't really get along with his family well. Um, and of course, like the main character is generic skinny white guy. Like, I understand that it would have been a little bit harder to find someone that could have done both parts well because halfway through the book he does get like shredded <laughs> which is a little bit unbelievable but he gets shredded nonetheless i understand it would have been harder to do that but i don't appreciate when a character is described in a book as being like not less attractive than average but attractive in a way that isn't mainstream applicable you understand 
And I don't like it when they take a character like that and they make them just, like, generic, like, oh, this is what everyone thinks is attractive kind of thing. I really did not appreciate that. So that's the first thing that kind of threw me off about, like, the trailers. Okay, so it's applying okay. Not the best that I've seen. The shimmer is still there. I'm going to try building it up and see what happens. The next thing that I was worried about was how anime the Oasis looked. I kind of pictured it as being like the Oasis itself as being basically just real life, like that nice looking, but with like people that could look however the hell I wanted to look. They kind of went full anime and the main character looks like someone's OC <laughs> from like DeviantArt. Oh god. Um, and then one thing that really like threw me off was Artemis herself. Like she's on the cover right here. Like look at that. So Artemis in the book was described as just being, she basically looked the exact same way that she did in real life and like spoiler alert, which it's not even a spoiler alert because they showed this in the trailer. Like the whole point of her avatar was to look exactly like she looked except without the gigantic, not gigantic, but she had a large birthmark on her face, which she felt incredibly self-conscious about. And so when she created her Oasis like character, she did just, you know, her normal appearance, but without the birthmark. And I think that had a large connotation to it. It was not a big arc in the book, but it was there and it was significant and it played a large part in her relationships and ugh, and in the trailer, like they show her birthmark in the trailer and it's like this big. And it's not that bad like it's like this big and it's light purple it looks like she put on too much purple eyeshadow and had a little bit of fallout like that's what it looks like so i'm not happy i mean i can't pass total judgment until i've seen the movie i really want to go see the movie this weekend i'm gonna see if i can drag my boyfriend to it so i can't pass total judgment until i've seen the movie but what from what i've seen in the trailer i'm worried because like in the trailer and on this even on this palette like artemis looks like like an alien. <laughs> I don't understand why they made her look like this. Like it just was really different from A, the way that she was described, and B, the way that like I pictured her. Because honestly, she was supposed to be like the girl next door, like YouTuber in the Oasis that just really loved nerdy stuff and was like really into the keys and like researching stuff and like researching all this stuff about the 80s. But uh, I don't know. Okay, so the color is showing up. You really can't see it on camera. I can barely see it like in real life, but it's there. It definitely sticks better to the glitter glue. I wouldn't use this without a glitter glue in the future, either on my lower lash line or on my lid. Surprisingly, there was no fallout from this one. Considering the amount of fallout I got from the silver shade, maybe it was because I was going in with the glitter glue for the most part and like a more dense brush. So if you want to minimize the fallout with any of the shimmer shades in here, I'd recommend going in with like a dense shade or brush and a glitter glue. I want to use another shade to highlight my inner corner today. I'm going to use Hacker, which is like this pink shimmery shade. I'm just going to go in with my inner shade or brush from Sigma and just tap that right there. Okay, that did not look as nice as I wanted it to, but it's there. <laughs> so I'm gonna finish off this look today with a lipstick from Fenty. This is her Mademoiselle lipstick in Wasabi, a nice green. I'm feeling the green today. Let's go in. Okay, so sidebar, I will say it is significantly harder to get a nice crisp line out of the Mademoiselle lipstick once you've used it a few times, as the tip does wear down. I had a little bit of a struggle over here trying to get a crisp line right there, so the next time that I use this, I'll probably go in with a lip brush instead of just going in straight from the applicator, but I do love the color, 100%. So we are all zoomed out for the final look. I am loving the actual like end result here. I think it took a lot of extra work to get here, but I am happy with how things turned out. I think a lot of these shadows require extra work. I've used the majority of them. One, two, three, four, five. I've used six out of the nine shades. I can't speak to the matte black. I'm not sure how that works. I will have updates in the description box below about wear time and about the rest of these shades. So make sure you check that out before you leave today. Overall, 
this isn't my favorite palette and it's not my least favorite palette. I'm going to try using it with some other primers, maybe some other glitter glues, maybe spraying some of the shimmers of Fix Plus to see if I can get like get it to work better for me because I do love the color scheme. I love how bright it is. I love how colorful it is. Like I love the idea behind it. The same thing about the book. I love the idea and the world of this but when it comes to the details and when it comes to the execution and the story, I'm not 100% sure. Thank you for staying with me throughout what I'm sure was a very long video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can catch the rest of my videos as they come out. If I can see the movie before this video goes up, I'm gonna try to get this video up today or tomorrow. If I can see the movie before then, I'll make sure to update you with my thoughts down below because I'm sure I will have a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm that obnoxious person that like in the theater with my boyfriend or like if I'm watching a video with my friends I'll be like so in the book this is what happened and I won't do that for the whole movie but I'll do that for the majority of the movie so that's what you're getting into here <laughs> so again thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you in my next video <sighs> bye